Hello everyone, Elaine Co. reporting for AgWeb. EAA held its annual ski plane fly-in on February 6th, and thanks to a snowstorm earlier in the week, they had a pretty good crowd. Well, we're here at uh, EAA's annual ski plane fly-in, which is uh, really a big significant piece of history from, for EAA. Uh, the organization itself, back in the 50s when the original meetings occurred uh, down in the Milwaukee area, transformed into moving up to the Oshkosh area. One of the big pieces of history that people don't recognize is that the ski plane fly-in was also in honor of Audrey Poboresny's birthday. And so this was an occasion where we would get together, there'd be ice skating on the pond, there'd be ski plane flying, and of course a, a wonderful birthday cake and, and toast to, to Audrey. Um, I talked to Audrey, Audrey just recently and she, uh, she said, you know, the only thing, I miss seeing everybody, but you know, when you get old, going out in the snow and the cold just isn't as fun anymore. But all of us remember that that's one of the reasons why, why we're here. It's been a good turnout, over 25 airplanes. Uh, lots and lots of people drove in with their families and kids. It's been so great to see the youth out here uh, enjoying the snow and, and seeing what these aviators are doing on skis, which I think some people uh, who aren't familiar with aviation say, that's really a novel concept to think that you can actually fly onto the snow. So it's been a great time. It's also a reminder that summer's around the corner. Flying on skis is really flying more like flying on floats than it is flying on wheels uh, in that you have no brakes uh, and you have to be pretty aware of uh, the wind direction. Uh, turning is uh, sometimes uh, interesting. It's a lot easier to turn into the wind than downwind. You use all the controls uh, uh, to be conservative uh, flying a ski plane. You, you can't be just gentle. Takeoffs and landings are pretty similar to a float plane as well. Uh, on takeoff you kind of have to find the right pitch attitude to let the plane accelerate well. Uh, and landings, sometimes in a very uh, area where there aren't a lot of other objects, you can uh, have to treat it kind of like a glassy water landing. Just set up a rate of descent and uh, uh, keep the nose up a little bit. And when you touch down, you, you really don't have the ability to flare if you can't see exactly where the, the boundary is. But uh, it's a lot of, just a lot of fun. Well, the snow conditions can vary. Uh, uh, powder is delightful because it's nice and soft and easy to turn in. Uh, hard pack is just like driving your car on ice. And, and probably today is one of the more difficult situations. When it snowed, it was wet. And so this snow is fairly heavy. And so it sort of bites into the uh, skis and uh, makes turning a little bit more difficult. The other consideration you have is you have to be careful. On some days, you know, your skis will warm up uh, when you land. And, when you uh, stop for a while, the skis can freeze to the ground and you have to pry them up or you know, loosen it up before you can get going. Not a problem with wheels normally, but you know, a few special considerations for skis. Most of them are made out of metal, but uh, some of them are Teflon uh, based, but uh, you can make them out of wood as well. Uh, you'll notice that they have uh, bungees that keep the front uh, tipped up, uh, just like uh, if you're doing a ski jump, you want to land with the tails of your skis uh, first, not to let the the nose dig in but uh, you know just fun kind of material and of course there also are some that have wheel penetration skis those that are usable either on uh, uh, hard surface or on snow but most of these airplanes here have pure skis which means they're going to find some place that has uh, snow both ends